This is the Real Construction Owners Podcast. What's going on, everyone? Justin Ledford here, the host of Real Construction Owners Podcast, where we interview real construction owners of multi-million dollar construction companies so you can build a thriving business, increase your income as well as your impact without it taking you forever. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Today, we're gonna be discussing being an owner versus being an operator. A lot of contractors, they start their construction company in the field, doing the work, making the sales, ordering the materials, making sure the job gets done, calling the customer, collecting the money, but then there's a defining moment when they hit a crossroad, they think to themselves, man, do I wanna be doing this or do I wanna grow my construction company? And the problem is most business owners, they don't create a business. They just create a job. Five years goes by and they're still having to do the work or at least some aspects of it. They haven't built a team or an organization that will drive without them at the wheel. I read a startling statistic that the average business owner only makes $41,000 per year. That's like minimum wage. They bust their tail, they work crazy long hours, and they do it all instead of having a team do it for them. They're doing the task themselves instead of creating processes or a training for an administrator to do it for them. This mentality of, hey, I can do it better, it holds them back because they get stuck working on the business instead of working on the business. Your business, it becomes a time vampire, sucking the life out of you. It grabs hold of you and it sucks your passion out of what you're doing. And this will happen if you don't make a change. Yes, you can make good money being an operator if you get good at sales and marketing, but you're never going to grow to true freedom. You're always gonna be on the hamster wheel, stuck in the rat race. Then there's the fine line that when you're ready to cross it and you're ready to become an owner, you decide that, hey, if 80% of your time needs to be spent focusing on income producing tasks, tasks that create money for your construction company. From there, you need to outsource and delegate everything that touches your table. At my real construction owner retreat here in Costa Rica, I gather contractors around and one of the things that I teach them is the SOG method, which stands for service, operations, and growth. Each one of these is a section within your company that has a department leader that's running that section. It's your responsibility to give that leader their weekly KPIs and their processes that they have to deliver to you every week. And when this happens, you become the owner and you get to watch the business grow. When you have all the right people making sure the services that you sell are getting done properly, and when you have an operations manager handling collections and calling customers, and lastly, when you have a recruiting manager who's constantly bringing new salespeople into your business, you get to become the owner and you get to inspire people and do fun things with these people. You as the owner need to be spending time focusing on tasks that bring in cash. So you can have the cool office, pay all the bills, have the money to build an incredible culture. And when I ask successful construction company owners what's one of the best processes that they have in their business, I keep hearing a repetitive answer. It's their text and their email automation. And I agree, you need to spend time on this or get a mentor who can set it up for you because this will save your admins countless hours on all the repetitive tasks that they have to keep doing. One of the masterminds that I'm in, is a, it's for seven figure men. I learned a very valuable lesson from an extremely successfully wealthy and healthy and man who had a purpose in his life. He told me that Justin, you have to become the door, not the doer. And I said, can you elaborate? He said, yes, your opportunity needs to be an opportunity where people can come in and grow and and thrive within this. You're the door, they come in and they're the ones doing all the work. If you have to hire, if you have to like create estimates, you need to hire somebody. If you have to call a customer, you need to hire somebody. If you have to call a supplier, you need to hire somebody to do that. If you have to collect money, you need to hire somebody to do these tasks. Because when you become a business owner and you stop using the money to buy stupid stuff that you don't need, 
and instead using the money to love the people and invest in your company and your organization, that's when your business can begin to thrive. Business owners that have long-term thinking, they believe in delayed gratification. They use the money to secure investments that are gonna benefit them five to 10 years down the road. Whereas operators, they just spend the cash on stupid things that give them immediate gratification, but they hurt them in the long run. So instead of investing in you know, an actual office building or advertising or branding or company vehicles or culture, culture building for the life of their company. They buy a $100,000 jacked up truck or a $100,000 boat, and these have long-term negative effects. A pivotal mindset that you have to have as a business owner, instead of just thinking of as your business as a cash flow machine, is think of your business as an asset that you can sell down the road for millions of dollars. And as an owner, you have to start thinking of this long-term valuation of your business as an asset, as a machine that will create profits for you. Don't get stuck doing the work, swinging the hammer, making the phone calls. Most operators, they, they get stuck in this work because they think, man, nobody can do this as good as me. Nobody has the rapport that I have with clients. Nobody can order the materials as good as me. Nobody can deal with the subcontractors like I can. Let's unpack that real quick. First of all, you got to go make money so you can hire people to do these tasks. Second, you're the owner of this construction company and you may not find somebody who can do it as good as you, but if they can do it 80% as good as you, then you have a win-win situation because you give them a job and then you can focus on creating more revenue for your company. Let go of your control or need for being in control so your business can start to grow. Another thing you wanna implement is a winning culture within your business. You wanna attract quality people. What does that mean? You gotta have a lucrative compensation plan that you're providing to these salespeople. You gotta have a culture where they're thriving and they're growing. Make it to where they wanna wake up in the morning and come to work every day. Because if you do that, they'll show up fired up. For example, my company, I used to have a hard time recruiting commission-based salesmen for the longest time, but then I implemented a base pay and a commission where as long as they schedule appointments, they get $200 every time they schedule a qualified appointment, plus they get their commission on the deal that closes. So they're getting money now and they're getting money when the deal comes in. They love this because immediate cash flow and delayed cash flow, and it's solving their problems. And that's how men and women are staying with my company long term. On top of that, we have veteran reps who get to train the newer reps, and the veteran reps get overrides on the newer reps. So it's it's they're not looking for any other opportunity because they have a place to grow. Listen, you have to start to transition from being an operator to an owner. You're gonna have to make sacrifices in the short term to build something much bigger than yourself. In this video, you learn just a key few things that can help you go from being an operator to becoming an owner. If you like this video, please subscribe. We drop videos like this every week. And if you have questions, please in the comments below, just mention what your questions are and I will answer them. Thank you so much.